It all started back in January 2000 with the award-winning Canadian documentary Silent Alarms. Silent Alarms exposed a well-kept secret that the type of smoke alarms most of us rely on are nowhere near as safe or as reliable as we've been led to believe. However, Silent Alarms named names and was silenced due to litigation. But this story has to be told, so we decided to make our own documentary. The majority of smoke detectors sold today do not detect the type of fire that is most likely to kill you. Tom Clark, investigative journalist from the film Silent Alarms. What you are about to see could save your life. You will learn that the type of smoke detectors you use could make the difference between life or death. There's two completely different types of smoke alarms, ionization and photoelectric. For 30 years, the debate has raged as to whether or not ionization alarms really do work. What we're going to show you in the next few minutes is a real test with real smoke with a real live working ionization smoke alarm and you're going to find out the facts for yourself. The aquarium test was designed by the World Fire Safety Foundation. It is potentially dangerous and should only be performed by a qualified firefighter. And this is just a standard piece of foam from a mattress. We're going to put the soldering on, we're going to bury it into the middle of this foam. We're going to put this into our aquarium. The smoke is that thick in there that you can hardly see my hand, yet the smoke alarm isn't making a sound. And if we recorded this for the next hour, what would happen is the smoke would get thicker and thicker and the alarm just won't go off. They do not detect smoke. They're not a smoke detector. We can see the smoke's built up now. It could be you, one of your children or anyone you know on that bed. If you're a firefighter, we strongly suggest you do your own aquarium test and see and experience the facts for yourself. After our aquarium test aired on TV, the Indiana State Fire Marshal said, We have 5 million smoke detectors in this state that are ionization detectors that may fail in the time of need, and this may well be the most vital life safety issue of our time. After instigating the first legislative changes in the US, Boston Fire Department's Chief Fleming said, I think it is responsible for as many as 10,000 deaths since 1990. When we first appeared on national TV, we claimed that the ionization type of smoke alarm, supposedly protecting hundreds of millions of families around the world, are dangerous. David Isaac from the Fire Protection Association of Australia appeared on the program. David, I understand you've done extensive research regarding this issue. Why is it that ionization smoke alarms pass global fire safety standards? Adrian, I think it would help if I could explain how we measure the performance of smoke detectors and smoke alarms in Australia in order to pass the tests for approval. We use a measure called percent light obscuration per metre. At 10% obscuration per metre, the average person would be running for the door. You wouldn't be very comfortable in a room at 10% obscuration smoke. 20% obscuration is the maximum allowed to pass a test for approval in Australia. Now what we discovered is the Australian Standards Committee doing some inquiries into test data to our horror was that ionisation smoke alarms are allowed to go to 50 to 60 percent obscuration per metre. I'll say that again, 50 to 60 percent obscuration per metre. Dangerously high, totally unacceptable. You can imagine, if you run for the door at 10 percent, you probably won't find the door at 50 to 60 percent. How could this be possible? In 1976, the US government funded testing of smoke alarms in typical residential applications. And in 1976, they discovered that the ionization smoke alarm had an inability to detect smoke from typical smoldering fires. Fires such as a cigarette dropped on a couch or a mattress or on the smoldering electrical fault that would occur in a home. The type of smoldering fires that occur at night when residents are asleep. The type of fires that statistically initiate the most fatal fires in residential structures. And for 30 years, this information has been kept from the public. 
After seeing the aquarium test, in which this ionisation smoke alarm failed to operate, I thought it would be a good idea to demonstrate that this was a fully functioning ionisation alarm. What's the solution? Ionisation smoke alarms are dangerous because they lull people into a false sense of security. But there's more to it than just changing your smoke alarms to photoelectric. You need all the facts to properly protect your family from fire. The aquarium test is a simple demonstration designed to inspire firefighters to conduct a full-scale test. What we're doing for you today is a follow-up to the aquarium test we did a few months ago where we set a smoldering fire into a, in a fish tank, only this time we're going to be doing it in a real house. The room that I'm in right now still has an ionization detector that hasn't gone off yet. O2 level 13.9%. There it goes. We finally got the ionization smoke detector to go off. We've been here almost uh, over an hour. Uh, you can see this room is not survivable without an air mask. You probably couldn't get your kids out. You make the decision how to best protect your family. A personal message to firefighters. Because the truth about smoke alarms has been kept from us for over 30 years, far too many firefighters have been needlessly killed or injured fighting fires they should never have been called out to. Find out why it's critical you do your own aquarium test so you can see the evidence firsthand for yourself. Thank you. December 2007, the US Congress got involved after Indiana's aquarium and full-scale tests. Indiana's Congressman Baron Hill reported that The Indiana State Fire Marshal declared a state of emergency after conducting tests that displayed the ineffectiveness of ionization smoke alarms which can cause deaths from carbon monoxide poisoning before the alarm rings. After an aquarium test and full-scale test in Tennessee, State Representative Mike Turner says his bill would ban the most common type of smoke detector. The cigarette companies used to say tobacco didn't cause cancer. We're in a similar situation here. We've got outdated technology that does not work. Turner believes the manufacturers are more concerned about making money than saving lives. If Turner's bill passes, the millions of dollars they've spent to get new ionization detectors on the market will be lost. Thanks to the dedication of campaigners, firefighters and regulators, legislation is pending to mandate photoelectric smoke alarms in all new homes in Australia and the US states of Massachusetts, Tennessee and Vermont. When you go to sleep tonight, if there's a fire, will your smoke alarm save you? In Scotchtown, northwest Tasmania, a Sunday sleepover turned into tragedy for three families. Sean and Anita Cohen woke at 11 p.m. to find their house full of thick black smoke. They managed to escape. Despite desperate rescue attempts, four children died. didn't work. Never made a peep. Over half a billion people will go to sleep tonight believing their smoke alarms will save them. Thank you for watching Smoke Alarm Recall the Problem. Please watch the solution.